Hello. I thought, you know, it's Sunday. I'm going to have a bit of a pampering session, but I have created these bathroom spy areas at home. So what I've done up here, I've got a lovely walk-in shower where I use my body scrub. I have a nice deep big bath in there. I put a candle on. I lie back. I look at the Velux window that was put in and I've actually, I'm not overlooked really, so I've just got clear glass there. A lot of people have obscure glass. But what I often do is I go into my little home cupboard and you'll see that is the secret. But this is the main bathroom and when I moved in here, this was actually two bathrooms that I knocked into one. So this is a great use of space. Walk-in shower. So let's have a little bit look around the house. I'll show you the other bathroom areas. Uh, walking around the hallway area here now. I'll take my little hoodie off. Popped on an Easter shirt for you all. How would you like that? So here I am in my hallway. Nice light fitting there. And I'm going to walk down, see if maybe put these shorts on. And bathroom number two. So this is the sort of entrance uh, bathroom area. And this is the sort of area where I thought I'd do a little bit of something a little bit bonkers. I've got a nice light up there. Oh, little, little spider's web. And I wanted to do something here where you could take a chance and have it a little bit more dramatic. So that's why I've gone for the blacks and the disco almost mosaic tiles. A little bit of Scotland coming through there. You'll see them again with the old antler thing going on. Um, but it's really nice because if people are coming for drinks or chats, then you can let them see your little guest cloakroom. And it's actually really good as well because in this bit here, like everywhere, everybody needs a little storage area to put all the mess in. Lovely use of mirrors, you'll see. There we go. And on to my other bathroom. Here we are through in the, I don't know if you saw it on Facebook, this was a little shower room when I first moved in. And I knocked to, this was the old pantry of the kitchen actually. And I created this place. Oh, nice pop of colour. Fabulous shower products. Nice walk-in shower. Not the hugest of head heights, but it's got the rain bath, shower head. Nice mirror. I have a small bathroom, but want dark tiles. Any tips? Well, the good thing about dark tiles is they are ceramic and they are polished, so they do reflect light. So even though, we'll go back to my little bathroom now, you'll see that although this is black, putting a little bit of contrast in there, you still get a lot of shine on it. You still get a lot of reflection. So even though you do have a darker tile, it still works really well. And my big, big tip everywhere, and you know I love it, have a look, have a look. Mirror. So yeah, you can have darker things. A lot of people think, you know, it's a small area. It has to be light and airy. You have to put white and make it as light as possible. No, I am the, of the opposite opinion. I think you should have darker things, put contrast in there, put mirrors, put shine, put reflection, and you'll find that you do get a great balance of a contrast of light and dark. So don't just do what everybody does and paint endless rooms of white. It just doesn't work. Now, I'm also going to be talking this week, I, I'm going to be talking about wall texture. And you'll see here, I'm a big fan of slate. And this actually was from a company in Livingston, Cooperstone. And they actually use this as exterior cladding for the front of homes. And I just fell in love with it. It's got three different colours in it. And you'll see there's a lovely sort of burnt orange colour coming through there. And when my floor, which is now grey, was, and you'll see if we go up here, 
was a lovely walnut colour, it brought out the warmth of the wood. So you can't, oh, little birdies singing. Um, this is in a little pampered area, I might sit later on. Out on the balcony here. Oh, that's better. Uh, back into my spy, a lot of people, and this is a nice way of maybe collecting things from around the world, near holidays, if we ever get to travel again. Got this lovely little statue from um, Mykonos, where I went on a holiday with my friend David in the late 80s, and I just loved that little um, sandstone head. This is a little Japanese or Oriental intense burner. And this is for my friend Lorraine Fraser, who's crazy, crazy about crystals and seemingly it helps her chakras or I think she's chakra can. Anyway, nice candles, my little air thing going on there to keep my skin fresh. Little bolsters of tiles just to make it look like a show home. Those will be soaking in a second. So <laughs> let's go downstairs and I'll grab a coffee. So nice big view there again. Thank you so much. Um, I will be posting pictures um, later on in the week of the before and after of this hallway and you will not believe the difference of these fantastic Velux windows. They just increase the light into this hallway area. This used to be a cupboard here. That well, it used to be my front door. But yes, I'm going to be posting lots of before and afters because everybody loves a before and after. Helen Livingston, choice of towels. Well, very good question. I think of towels a bit like um, if I'm getting ready to go out and I want a little spark of something a bit poppy. So you'll see upstairs I had some Habitat sort of Stria, which was a, a collection of colours, texture, towels. In the shower room downstairs, I've gone for a pop of orange just to keep it a little bit vibrant. And I think it's a great way, you know, you can get some inexpensive towels and if you can't, if you can't get them all at once, every so often, even if you're in Tesco or your local department store, if you're allowed out with your mask on or online, John Lewis Great Collection, um, just buy one a week. Buy the hand towel, buy the bath mat, and just build it up. Curtains, yes or no? Oh my goodness, I cannot live without curtains. And you'll see what I have here is I've opted for, this is a company called Linea, and these are actually made in Greece. And they are beautiful. You see there, it's actually like a spun, open weave texture. And I just love them because they do give a little bit of softness without a heavier curtain. I'm not overlooked, so I can literally just close them at the evening for a bit of softness. So I'm not overlooked. I don't need heavy, heavy curtains. Another lovely fabric here. I'm a big fan of shears. I just think they work so well because they let the light in. Voil, people say, John, 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 what is a voil? Well, to you and me, it's a fancy net curtain. Yeah. Carpet or flooring? Well, I love both. Everybody needs to get more on the floor. And I really love the blend of a nice hard floor with maybe a lovely rug. And that gives you the best of both worlds. In bedrooms, I tend to put carpet because you want that little bit of luxury underfoot, but I do like a hard floor. It's easier to clean and you get the old piece of art on the floor in, a, in, in the shape of a rug. Yeah, I love it. I love your light upstairs, tell me where it's from. Now that light, I also love, it's from my one-stop shop, Cotterill and Co. And they've got a great range of lighting. It's a, literally a one-stop shop. If you can't get in there just now, like I can't, for my fix with the fabulous staff, thanks Ruth, um, you can go online, Cotton and Co, and uh, you'll find that light there. It's lovely, and then lovely industrial feel. More questions, where is the artwork rug from? Well, 
I've got loads of suppliers. I buy a lot of my rugs, like this one here, which has got silk in it, uh, from Designers Guild. So that's Designers Guild, at Designers Guild. Um, but also, I got this one. It's a little bargain from Wayfair. So do you have time to go online and look at lovely things? Yes, we do. So there's another one from Wayfair as well. So these were opposed to, you know, that one. I think this one was only about 80 quid. So it's nice and I liked it because you'll see it matches the artwork. There's a little story going on there. Some people might have preferred that sofa to be green or blue velvet, but I just love this dwell. I spoke about it last week, the Lugano, amazing. But this is another one from Wayfair. And again, this was about £110, as opposed to if you want to really invest to go up to like seven, eight hundred pounds, this one here is really stunning and you can't really see it properly, but you'll see how the colours fade from darker, darker, darker to light. Can you get a slate wallpaper? Yes. There are loads of companies and I think, um, uh, what do you call it? Not Farmer and Ball, Williams and Brown. They do a lot. If you put, if you go onto Google and put fake slate wallpaper, there's loads of great companies. I know my friend John Olson and Julie did a lovely wood effect wallpaper. So there are lots of companies like Tektura, check their website as well. Um, and they have a lot of wallpapers that look like stone or slate or wood. So thank you for that. Look at this here. Not tile. So I've got a little bit of tile there in a mat. And this is actually a product from Rero, R-E-A-R-O. And it's actually a sheet of PVC. It's like a PVC wrapped, um, it comes in a form of four foot by six by eight foot. And it's actually just like a big sheet. So this whole wall, I didn't do it, but this whole wall was put up in just like half an hour. So I've got the room McCoy over there and we've got this here, which is also great if you're doing little shower rooms, little wet wall areas. Rio is a great, great um, product. Again, it's a bit like I'm not elitist about where I get my cushions from. I could go to Chelsea Harbour and the Design Centre in London um, and buy a cushion that's like £100. Um, but equally, I could buy a piece of fabric that was £50 a metre and make one. Or I could just pop down to the local shop. The John Lewis have got a great selection. Get online. Um, I also, you'll find out maybe in the next month or two, I'm going to be selling online some ready-made curtains and cushions just to conceal your packages and complete them. Um, so keep your poppers peeped for some new ranges. But where to get cushions? Anywhere you find them. Your local department store when it's opened again. Online. Just search, search, search. And the good thing about cushions is if you don't like them, you can do what I always do. Give them to my mother. There's a chain of events where I do one room, then another room, and then I'm tired of it. Where does it go? Down to my mum. So she has um, already got her own lovely taste, but um, she loves getting the old hand-me-downs. Um, is the multicolour cushion velour? Yes. Do you mean this one? It's like a duvori, so it's like a, a, a linen, and it has a velvet applique on top. But then you see, this one's really expensive. I've piped it in a little bit of a disco glitter leather. And then you've got this one. So this one, very expensive. This one, not so expensive. I'm working away along. I do love a little bit of velvet. It's absolutely luxurious. That was a portrait from the fabulous, my friends got me it for my um, 50th. Although, my dad said, it. oh, your face is tri your face is tripping you on that as well. I know. Sorry. Good morning, William McKenzie. Did you see you were bringing your own line? Amazing. Where do we look? Yes. If you keep in touch with me at John and Marble Design website, there's a new range of ready-made curtains and cushions, which should be next month. Everything's a little bit held up because of the uh, virus. Um, 
a little bit slower and there's another collection of cushions i think you saw me sitting on the floor there just last week um it's beautiful where is it from oh that actually is a, a zoffany fabric you're talking about the velvet that's a zoffany fabric which i had made into a cushion so that is what a lot of designers do they'll buy fabrics and have them made into cushions is another one loving that as well now, I think I've been talking long enough. Thanks for your questions. So we've talked about rugs. This week, I'm going to be showing you some before and afters of my little home, where I have been here for 16 years and created quite a lot of different things. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, keep watching, and keep your questions coming.